the garbage man finally just left. Original people here will remember the struggle that I used to have with the garbage men always coming whenever I sat down to film. And now I sat down to film, but as I was still getting shit together, they came. So snaps and claps for that. Also, I just realized, oh, I did not have my light on. Is that a little better? I don't know. Anyways, today we are talking, as you can tell by the title, we're talking about books with my favorite heroines or like books with just like what I think are really great heroines. Because here's the thing, for me, I'm a character driven reader. I don't care how great the plot is, if the characters suck or if like I'm not invested in the characters, my overall enjoyment of the book is not going to be high. So I always look for characters that I can like latch on to, that they can just be my ride or dies. And I especially obviously look for that in heroines. Obviously I love my heroes, we'll do that video. I think next month I'm gonna do books with my favorite heroes. But in this one, I wanted to do with my favorite heroines because we gotta put the girls first. I always put the girls first, we're putting the girls first here. I got a lot of books today to get through, so let's just cut this intro short. I'm gonna kind of explain like a little bit. You're gonna see a common theme here among all the heroines of like things that I look for in a heroine that I really love. Let's jump on in. So first book, a book that when I first I started thinking about this this was one of the like original books that popped into my head and I was like of course I'm gonna have to talk about that one and that is Sweet Dandelion by Macaulay Smeltzer. Y'all should know at this point that I use any excuse to put this book in some sort of video by me. I literally love it so much. It follows our heroine Danny. So Danny is a high school senior however she is 19 I believe because she did have to pull out a year from high school and now she's going back in to finish her senior year because at her old school there was a shooting where Danny was shot and injured and her mother was shot and killed. So obviously she took a lot of time to recover. Phys so physically she's mostly recovered but mentally she is still really in a bad place and she moves in with her older brother and he becomes like her new guardian and she starts attending this new school for her senior year. So at this new school they decide that Danny needs to meet with a guidance counselor every day for like a class period rather than going to like a different class and so she meets Lachlan and they're not supposed to fall in love but oh do they and here's the thing about Danny that is just my absolute favorite she is such a sad broken hopeless character when we get introduced to her at the beginning of this book and you just see her like come back to life over the course of this book this is a thick ass book. It's a character driven book. It really is just focused on Danny's healing journey. She's just so incredibly strong and to watch a character be at like their absolute bottom and then see them by the end of it ready for whatever life has in store for them. It's so beautiful. I love the mental health journey that we go on with Danny in this. She's just such an incredibly strong persevering character and oh, I literally love her so much. And all of you right now who are obsessing over the confidence of Wildflower Duet and you're like, what am I supposed to read next by Macaulay Smeltzer? This, this fucking book right here. I will be a champion for this book until the day I die. Okay, so these next three are all fantasy series, but they all have heavy romance plots in them. I would argue that one is pretty much like a romance in a fantasy setting. Um, but anyways, it's the three major series by Sarah J Maas. So first off though, we're gonna start off with Throne of Glass because this one has multiple women for me in this that I just absolutely love. I can't really even say that much about it without spoiling things. Um, except just know that this is like fantasy, fae, shifters, goodness. Yeah, um, also there's a man that just parked his truck and is staring at me. Can I help you? There are so many badass women in here, but specifically I gotta call out my four faves and that is Aelin, Lysandra, Manon, and Yurin. So, oh, that like group of women, I just freaking love I can't, I can't even say too much details about each of their characters without giving things away, but Aelin is literally like my all-time favorite heroine ever. Fucking Lilas. Lysandra, love her. She is someone who has had like, who has seen the worst of the worst and still chooses to like fight for the good and oh, just fucking love her. And then Manon. Manon, my main bitch, she is cold hearted, ruthless, like ruthless character at the beginning to see her heart thaw, chip by little chip, 
Oh, it's so satisfying. In Yurene, the underrated queen of this whole series. Okay, I love Yurene so much. Tower of Dawn is one of my favorite books in this series, and that's like her main book that she gets because she comes in very late in the series. You do not meet her until the sixth book. And she is incredible, so strong. Again, always chooses forgiveness, always chooses to be like the bigger, better person, but like does not get walked over. Ugh. Love your ring. So anyways, Throne of Glass women are amazing. Like if you're picking this series up, you're gonna get so many amazing heroines. Feyre from A Court of Thorn and, Thorns and Roses. I love Feyre. Again, especially in book two, you see someone who's just so broken and lifeless and just does not really see the point in anything. And to see her again come back to life and her entire mental health journey, the way that Sarah J Moss writes her heroines and then specifically with their mental health, just fucking works for me. I literally think she has some of like the best mental health representation that I've seen in like different books. I just love it. I really click with it. And I think Feyre's journey in this is absolutely wild. And then of course we got Crescent City here, Bryce, similar in the vein to Feyre and like her mental health, especially in this book. Um, how's this guy in breath? You didn't see it as much because I think she's just like in a better place. But uh, in this one, she does go through like a lot of heavy shit and she is not in the best place at times. And oh, there's like this one line at the end in this like battle scene where she calls Hunt and like she reveals something and oh my god it just like broke my heart. So good. Loved it. Love Bryce. Love all of Sarah J Moss's heroines. <laughs> Next up one of the other ones that I instantly thought about when I was starting to put together this video is Iris from Longshot by Kennedy Ryan. So this one follows August and Iris and they meet at a bar one night. They hit it off. They're watching a the game. They kind of like have a great banter whatever. August asks Iris out at the end of the night and she reveals like, hey, I can't, I have a boyfriend. And she goes back, they go their separate ways. And then later again, they meet again. And Iris finds out that August is her boyfriend's rival, like rival in basketball. So this is a sports romance to like in, set in the NBA. And she's dating Kate, is that Caleb? What was his name? Yep, Caleb, garbage man. Uh, she's dating Caleb and him and August are big rivals. So obviously it's a no-no because she has a boyfriend and because obviously like August and Caleb's relationship. I can't say anymore without getting into spoilers. Definitely for this one, there is some really dark content in it. So definitely do your research before reading any of it. But Iris's journey in this is just something that is so heartbreaking, so soul crushing to read at times and so frustrating because there's so many times where like you really feel like you are walking every single step with Iris and that you are in the same exact situation with Iris where you feel like trapped. You feel like there's literally no way out, nowhere to go. Like what can you do? You've like exhausted all of your options and you can't help but just like empathize with her and be there with her this whole way. But again, even though she's like going through horrible, horrible things, she never loses her kindness, always is looking out for other people and putting other people first. And she's she's just so strong and resilient, but then she's also vulnerable at the same time. And oh my God, I literally love Iris so much. I love August and Iris together. One of my favorite couples ever. Talk about soulmates. Next up, which is kind of the one I think that like inspired me to make this video all together because when I read this I was like I have never read a heroine like this before and it's incredible and that is the Mindfuck series by S.T. Abbey so these are five books however they are oh my god you can see my stack don't look these are five books but they're all short they're all like much more novella length I think they range between like a hundred pages to maybe the longest one is like a hundred and seventy ish pages very bingeable very quick to get through and trust me you are not gonna want to stop because each one leaves off with a cliffhanger so once you get going you are just not gonna want to stop so this one follows Lana and Lana is she's got a list and it's not like Santa Claus's list she has got a list and she is going to get her fucking revenge there's something that happened in Lana's child hi this sleepy boy just woke up from his nap how are you there's not really room for you over there there's not really room up there for you, but I guess you can make room. When Lana was a teenager, there was something that happened in her town between her, happened to her and her brother and her whole family kind of like it started off with her dad and then trickled down to her and her brother. I can't say much more than that because it does come out throughout the series. She has a plan 
to make all of the men suffer who made her and her family suffer. And so she is a serial killer. We love that for you, Lana, because she is getting her fucking revenge. And I was so here for it. She ends up falling in love with the profiler who is trying to find her. Like he's an FBI profiler, Logan. They meet not like in any circumstances surrounding the case, but they meet like accidentally and then they find, and then she finds out who he is, but he doesn't know that she is the killer that he is hunting. This book, this series is incredible. Knocked my socks off. I just, I felt the whole time I was like women, women doing their own work. Oh my God. I loved it. I mean, obviously it made me extremely angry because of things that happened to her, but I think like, just like as a woman, I was like, yes, get your fucking revenge. I was so here for it. Every single person she killed, I was like snaps and claps. But again, this series is dark. Obviously it has to do with like a serial killer, but the things that happened in Lana's past are very dark. So again, make sure that you do your research before reading it. Lana is just, oh, she's literally like unlike anyone I've ever read before. And I love her. The first of three of heroines from Penelope Douglas, but the one that I have to shout out from the Devil's Night series is Banks from Hideaway. This is book two in that series. This is my favorite book in that series. I always go back and forth and on if I love this one or Kill Switch more, but there's just something about Kai and Banks that just like speaks to me, speaks to my soul. And I freaking love Banks. So again, could get into spoilery territory of how she kind of fits in with some of the characters in the story. But I will just say that she ends up having an arranged marriage with Kai, but Banks is not having it. So Banks is very much of like, she has been raised by men like around herself. So she has to, she's had to almost like blend in with them I want to say like she wears like boy clothing she keeps her hair like up tucked into her hat she like flattens her chest with like tape and stuff I can't really even say like her reason means behind it but she's just never felt like she can like embrace her femininity and you get to like unravel behind that and I just think Banks was a fascinating character and a fascinating heroine because she has had to do everything on her own she has had to fight for every little thing ever since she was a child. She has grown up with horrible people around her. She has just been treated horribly by pretty much like everyone in her life. So she has known that she has to be the one to watch out for herself, like no one else is gonna do it. So she is just an incredibly strong heroine. She gets her shit done. She watches out for herself and herself only pretty much. Like she is her number one priority. And I love that. Like it's just how she's had to be. Oh, I just, I loved Banks. I, and I loved how then she worked with Kai specifically. Like I think they were just like such a match. Are you noticing a thing here? I really love just like strong, badass heroines and Banks fits the bill. Another badass woman is Serafina in Twisted Pride. So this is the third book in the Kimura Chronicles. So Serafina is a, a part of the Chicago Mafia and she is on her wedding day. She has an arranged marriage and she is a mafia princess. She is the niece of the head of the Chicago Mafia. However, the Vegas Mafia, where the Kamora Chronicles take place, have some beef with Chicago. So how does Remo, the capo of the Las Vegas Mafia, decide to settle that? He kidnaps Serafina on her wedding day and holds her hostage. Oh my god, I loved it. This is obviously a darker romance. It's a Mafia romance. Remo is a complete psycho. Like, you see that in the, in the first two books in this series, and especially in this one. Like, Remo is, he is on some wild shit. But you know who meets him at that level? Banter for banter, insult for insult, dig for dig. Serafina. They have such a like equally matched dynamic, even in a situation where the power dynamics is like out of whack. Serafina still holds power over Remo and it's insane to watch her wiggle her way in to him and like his psyche and his heart. It's incredible. Serafina does not cower. She is not a damsel in distress. She does not get to the Las Vegas Mafia, which has a reputation for being like utterly ruthless with their women. She does not come in there cowering. She's like, what am I gonna do to get out of this? And how am I going to fight him at every tooth and nail? And she does that. It's incredible to watch. I love Serafina. Again, another like very, very strong, badass heroine who speaks her mind and 
can hold her own. I just finished my reread of this the other day and this is Good Gone Bad by Gianna Darling, Miss Harley Rose. So this one follows obviously Harley Rose and this is the third book in the Fallen Men series by Gianna Darling. We see little bits of Harley Rose in the other books, but not really a ton. Um, so her father and her older brother are both, or well, King is like a prospect at this point. But anyways, her father is the head, the president of the Fallen Men Motorcycle Club, and his book is the second book. So then obviously Harley Rose is like a motorcycle club princess. She drinks, she smokes, she fights, she parties. She is getting in with a, another motorcycle club and she has an abusive boyfriend in there and this book actually picks up with his death right at the beginning and who does she turn to when she's in a time of trouble she turns to officer danner we have a cop in this one so it's kind of like bad girl good guy but even like even though lionel's a good guy he doesn't cower away from the bad things that harley rose does he's more like am i gonna have to like clean up some mess or anything but anyways Harley Rose. I specifically love her for a lot of reasons, but I think kind of along the same band of what I've talked about with these other heroines is that she is incredibly strong. She has gone through some horrible shit with her ex-boyfriend and just being raised the way that she was, not even necessarily in the motorcycle club, but she has a horrible mother. Her mother is garbage and she's had to be raised with her when her father was sent to prison. That's the whole other thing you'll get in the other books. But she just, she has not had it easy growing up. But again, she never loses her like free spiritedness in a way. She cares so much about the people that she loves. I just love characters that are not necessarily like nice to everyone but are ride or die for their loved ones and that how that's how harley rose is and she will do literally anything for her family and her loved ones and then i just specifically love how her and danner's relationship dynamic plays out in this this is like a dom sub kind of situation and you would think that harley rose would be like the dominant one in the relationship but that's totally not the case and i just really love like seeing her surrender and be at peace with danner Oh, so good. I'm going to include both Clay and Liv from Tri6 Venom. So this is a sapphic bully romance and it is like heavy on the bully because Clay, Clay is a bitch, honestly. Like she is, but she's hurting inside and that's where with Clay's character, like even every vile thing she did to Olivia, I still was always like, but you have good in you. Like I can see it. I know it. I just need you to see it too. And she very much reminded me of other like heroes that I love in other books or specifically even kind of like Jared in the Fallaway series. She kind of reminded me of him a little bit. And again, it's like, I just can't help but be drawn to those very like mean characters because I think they're mean for a reason. And you totally get inside Clay's head and why she acts out the way that she does. And I can't help but be just a sucker for those. I also think Clay's unlikable. I do. I don't think that overall people like love Clay. But I think that's why I do. Because I almost feel like I need to like defend her. Because I'm like, but but do you understand like why she's doing this? Anyways, um, yeah, I, I tend to like unlikable characters. And Clay is one of those. And then also Liv in this. I think Liv again her circumstances that she's grown up with, with all of her brothers, like she's just, you can tell why she is the way that she is and why she does the things that she does. And with their parents gone, she's had to like grow up very quickly and become a parent. And also the things that she's dealt with, with the bullying from Clay and then just her being over at this private school when she's from like the other side, you know, town and just the way that people look at her and look down on her and how she's like, y'all are not better than me just because you live over there or you have this amount of money, like I'm still a person. And I just, I love that. I, I really love this book. And both of the heroines in it are just, I think, extremely strong. Okay, so next up I couldn't choose. So I originally had all three of the heroines in here and then I was like, no. You need to narrow it down a bit. So I narrowed it down. I still love Ava, but I just think that Bridget and Jules are both, oh, I just, I love them a lot. So I'm talking about the Twisted series by Anna Huang. So they're all standalones within a series. So I did still have Twisted Love here. It's just that, like, I love Ava, but I almost think that I love her more so with Alex than maybe as like her as a character on her own where Bridget and Jules, as much as I love them, like with their men, I specifically like, I love these two together. 
I like Reese, but he's not my favorite, and I just love Bridget on her own. So I'm gonna just talk about these two. So anyways, this one is uh, a bodyguard royalty trope. So Bridget is the princess of Eldora, and she is originally the second in line. So she is over in the US having fun, going to school, doing her thing, whatever. And then her brother ends up abdicting the throne, which then guess who is next in line? That's Bridget. And she has to go over and take on this duty that she never thought that she would have to. But here's the thing with Bridget is that it very much reminded me of like Princess Mia in <laughs> The Princess Diaries too. Like Bridget just never thought that she would have to step into this role. And other people don't really think she's credible or like a legit person to be sitting on the throne because you know she hasn't been around she's not like what they thought that their next royalty meant their next queen was gonna be oh no sorry josh and jules but she doesn't let that deter her whatsoever she doesn't let anyone's expectations or traditions or anything impact how she's going to lead how she's going to rule how she's going to live her life and i love that she's just incredibly strong incredibly smart very kind very loving but you're not like people are not going to walk all over her and i love that i love seeing her like transform from being just like a regular person to like a queen like you could Feel that transformation as this book goes on and I also love Jules and that is the third book in Twisted Hate so this one is an enemies with benefits best friends brother kind of situation so Josh is Ava's older brother and Jules is Ava's best friend and they hate each other they have always hated each other and it's very clear like it is actual hate and this is like a slow burner like they take a lot of time hating each other but they're both stressed out with their different jobs so they decide like hey why don't we just get like a benefits kind of situation going because we can just like hit it and then go our separate ways and know that there's never going to be any feelings never going to be anything changing between us that's what they all say isn't it but here's the thing about Jules once again she's she puts out such like a strong confident image but then on the inside she is like very insecure and but she doesn't like project that on other people but it's just like it drew me to her when I was reading because she is so vulnerable even though she puts off this image that she's anything but. And I love that. I love seeing that bit of vulnerability behind like this very strong mask. And I just thought Jules was fun. She's incredibly smart. She's going to law school. And I just love seeing a heroine like take charge of her own future and not waiting for anyone else to come along and do anything for her she's very much like I'm gonna do everything on my own because she's used to doing everything on her own again do you notice a theme here I just love heroines who get their shit done and last but not least on this list is one of my newer books that I've read recently and that is Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin so Bennett is our heroine in this one and she was incredible. So this is a historical pirate romance, love triangle, captive, captive. So Bennett, uh, when we first see her, she's much younger. I forgot how old she is at the beginning of this. But her mother is basically trying to like make her a society woman and has this arranged marriage ready for her with this dude that is like old and crusty. And Bennett is like, no, I don't want to do that. I want to be a pirate. I want to live on the seas. I want to be free. She wants to just be able to do whatever she wants to do and not live to the conformities of society at this time. And something ends up happening and she ends up going on the run and she becomes a pirate and she has her own ship and she is just doing shit herself. But then she ends up getting kidnapped by a pirate hunter. She meets Lord Ashley, who's the one who kidnapped her. Mm -hmm. Anyways, without getting into too much of the plot details, once again, incredibly strong, incredibly smart, resourceful. Bennett is very resourceful. She understands what it's like for women at this time and uses that to her advantage. The shit that she goes through in this book is wild. It's very dark. Again, you'll want to look up triggers for this one. But she, ah, oh, she's just so incredibly strong. And I just love it so much. I don't really have much more to say. Okay, that was the end of this video. I hope you found some new books with some badass heroines to go and read. So anyways, that was it for today. And I will see you when I see you.